Hello and welcome to episode 10 of Frame by Frame. Episode 10 already? Well, it almost seems five minutes since we did episode 9. <laughs> oh my god, that's actually... Okay, we've, we've hit double figures. I'm quite happy with that. Both in our listenership and our, the amount of podcasts we've done. <laughs> yeah, we're very lucky. We're very fortunate to have those 11 people. Yeah. yeah. Um, both of them are my mother. <laughs> You talking to me? Did you have a brain tumor for breakfast? Well, then who the hell else are you talking? You talking to me? I'm funny how. I mean, funny. I'm clowning. I'm Peter Vinkman. We all go a little mad sometimes. Man who doesn't spend time in this family can never be a real man. Damn! I'm kind of a big deal. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Well, I'd like to thank the people from Russia who tuned in for three seconds. <laughs> Very nice of you. Very nice, yeah, yeah. We, we, we do have analytics and we do look at our analytics to figure out who's watching and... Yeah, we're, Russia we're, really. I, I feel the love. Yeah, we're doing really well in Canada. Canada loves us. Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised. Comment, I'm surprised please. Anybody, <laughs> please comment. Comment. Yeah. <laughs> Just let us know what you really think. Honestly, don't worry about our feelings because that's what YouTube's about. I mean, who really cares about feelings and <laughs> comments on YouTube? Exactly. Yeah. But, so um, yes. What are we to, to celebrate this momentous occasion? Yes. What are we going to discuss today? We are going to talk about the Indiana Jones. Trilogy. Tri That's right. It's, it's not a trilogy, though, is it? Oh, but the, the, these three films we've we've grown up with, and uh, you know, you you just you just yeah, you, you can't be without these three films. It's it's, it's a, I a agree. Of a trilogy. Uh, yeah, uh, it's yeah. not a trilogy, though, is it? Because they did the, um, the the one with the crystal face. Oh, that wasn't an Indiana Jones film. Was it not? No, that was that was a. Uh, that was a commercial for diarrhea medicine for donkeys. Look what you did! I can't believe what you did! But yeah, we're here to talk about the Indiana Jones trilogy. That's the three films. That's The Raiders of the Lost Ark, Indiana, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, and Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. The final movie. The Last Crusade. Okay? But That's, it wasn't The Last Crusade. Um, he, it was he, The Last. He crusaded again. <laughs> yes, in his tenor for men diapers that you put on old people. <laughs> yes, he creaked his way through a further installment. He dribbled his way through another one. <laughs> but these films are great, and that's the point. Yeah, that's why we, we, because I mean you grew up with them like like we did with Star Wars. I mean it, it seems to be the, the the trilogy that you closely associate with Star Wars is second best. Yeah, and um, uh, the first idea of this. Well, I think uh, Lucas. George Lucas had the he came up with the idea of Indiana Jones. I don't think it was called Indiana though. I think he had it. What was Indiana? Don't call me Junior. Could have been Smith or something like that. Smith, possibly. Yeah, yeah. I think it was. And it was because um, he's so po he's so poetic. You yeah, know. you know what he's like. He's great. Yes, yeah, Star Killer. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. But so yes, yeah, so I think it was Spielberg that changed it to Indiana Jones. But they were actually Spielberg and Lucas were on a beach in Hawaii waiting to get. Mm -hmm the uh, box office reports from Star Wars and Spielberg revealed to Lucas that he always wanted to direct a James Bond film it's quite funny because they did a lot of filming in Hawaii as mm -hmm. well so yeah. um, they had a lot of uh, air miles to Hawaii during the making and before obviously yeah, they like going. so if you ever want to find where Steven Spielberg and George Lucas come up with all their ideas they're, they're completely hopped up on punch yeah, um, in a beach in Hawaii in a beach in Hawaii so um but yeah, that's where uh, yeah. And then Lucas said, rather um, big-headedly, saying, "I've got something that's better than James Bond." Better than James Bond. Yeah, I can't. It's not better than James Bond. It's different. It's different. There's no such thing. Well, yeah. We, well, it's, it's American. They obviously wanted to have uh, Indiana Jones as a series of film. Fortune and glory, kid. Fortune and glory. 
um, from the very start. Like, I mean, I think George Lucas is probably the first director who, apart from Francis Ford Coppola and The Godfather, um, but one of the first directors who 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 literally can sell um, more than one film at a time. Mm. I think he was the start of that whole. Um, the, the trilogy thing going on. I mean, I mean, Godfather wasn't a trilogy until 1990, so you only had two films. So I, I guess that kind of works. Um, yeah. So yeah, George Lucas really was the founder of of the trilogy. And um, yeah, so he and I think by doing Indiana Jones, they did they invented this this kind of action film. Yeah. They did, yeah. Where, where it's just mean? wall-to-wall action. Um, the protagonist. I mean, I, I think it, it's pretty much like James Bond because he has the uh, the bad woman that he has to, uh, to tend with, and, the, and, mm. the, and a, a good woman who he falls in love with, kind of. So we start with Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah, that's it. And uh, I think this is one of the all-time best openings to a film ever. Yeah. It is. Yeah, it really is. And what I like about it, when it first starts, it's really dark and kind of moody and brooding, isn't it? When they're walking yeah. through, they're walking through the forest, they find the cave, you know, and you can see that like certain people. That some really classic lines as well, like, "Come on, you know, there's nothing to fear here." Well, that's what's good. Good lines, you know, a little yeah. bit clever. Yeah, gets you drawn in, but makes it, you think. Yeah, you learn all you need to know about the character in that first bit, which is nothing will ever go right for him. Because you think he's got everything in control. He gets his sand, puts it in the bag, you know, he's weighing up, is that about? so he moves the idol, puts the sand on there, and then it instantly goes down and everything goes wrong for him. Yeah, the sidekick's um, you know, double-crossing. Yeah. Bitch, who, who abandons him. He does, yeah, because you toss me the idol, I'll toss you the whip. And then he yeah. drops it. Yeah. You can tell he, he's trustworthy. Um, he trusts everybody who goes on his crusades with him. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I guess he's a little bit uh, too trustworthy, naive. Yeah, um, but he's able to get out of any situation. But just by pure force of will, not by uh, being incredibly yeah. skilled. Yeah, it's it's not as yeah. There's no superhero. Yeah, because when he drops the, the whip and you've got the um, the walls coming down, hmm. and he jumps over and he grabs that like a vine, doesn't he? And you hmm. get that little bit like he smiles, or he kind of then the vine just starts to fall away, and you know. Yeah, so he thinks he's got it in the in the bag, and he he rarely does. Yeah. And it's just blind luck and, and fortune that he actually gets through any situation. And that's pretty much the first five minutes. Yeah, first five minutes yeah. and you find all you need to know about him. And he's scared of snakes. Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? They're, they're, that, that's, that's quite economic writing. Mm. And that was George Lucas's writing. Yeah. I just put the word economical, George Lucas. But didn't Lawrence Kasdan... Uh, help pen. I think it, I don't, yeah, I think he did. I, 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 he probably untangled uh, what could have been quite a a, a mess. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. Um, but yeah, um, it's a very straightforward action film. The first one, it's it, you 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 kind of with him straight away. You are, yeah. You get the ensemble. He's very specific. He's got a specific look: the hat, the whip, the gun. Iconic look. It's it's pretty much done what what he said he wanted to do to to kind of do James Bond, but just just it's the Americana. It's the American James Bond. It's the Wild West James Bond. And his pupils fall in love with him. That's a weird thing. That's, yeah. That's the school scenes when she, she closes, closes her, her eyes, says "Love you" on her eyelids. Yeah, but don't. When you watched it as a kid, did you ever? think oh, I wish that's gonna happen I wish that could happen to me in school no I think I was thinking how the hell did she do that did she yeah. get someone else to do that maybe we overthink things yeah maybe they have but I just kind of <laughs> thought I just wish that could happen to me oh yeah and then sort of then the pupil leaves an apple on his desk and then you think oh George Lucas wrote that <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's one of his lines that's <laughs> one of his bits but yeah I, I've noticed as well that um, the Indiana Jones trilogy just talking about the whole ensemble the, all the three films three films um, they haven't gone through the mincer like Star Wars has it's not the years honey. it's the mileage they haven't gone through special editions what you see and that theatrical release is what you see in the DVD and Blu-ray. Yeah, thank. They have not done thank anything. Thank God for that. But why? Why has he not done that? Why has he not looked at that and thought, 
I mean, I'm just surprised. I mean, maybe because he he gave it to Steven Spielberg, and Spielberg is just not a real big fan of of tinkering with with his own work. No, I think once Spielberg's fi- his films out there, yeah, he's, he's not done. he's not going to start messing with it, and he's not going to let Lucas let him, you know start messing with it. There's no uncut version. There's no definitive version. Um, every single edition that's come out on DVD or with Blu-ray has just had the bog standard documentaries and that's mm. it it hasn't been ruined has it really I mean that these three films are absolutely perfect uh, as a as a little trilogy so even releasing um, the Young Indiana Jones Chronicles couldn't ruin the, the three films let's, let, let's just talk about the, the Young Indiana Jones Chronicles as a TV series it, it had so much money thrown at it mm. it was basically this is what I've read it was actually a testing ground for the Star Wars prequels, ILM uh, had oh. yeah. This, hear me out. Um, they did. A, they purposely wrote in crowd scenes, big city views, and so that they can start practicing the whole um, putting too much CGI into one image, um, okay. so that they can learn how to to screw up the Star Wars prequels. I'm really glad they practiced because they. They did well. They did well. Crowd, just basically crowd placement, you know, making things look big and spectacular in the background and uh, having special effects everywhere. There were actually a lot more special effects in the Young Indiana Jones Chronicles than people actually noticed because they were actually all done very subtle and tasteful and in the background. The only one I remember of the Young Indiana Jones is the one that Harrison Ford was actually in. I'm sure he played like a blues musician in it. Yeah. Because and the singer in it, because he was playing the guitar, but the singer was Jar Jar Binks. Yeah? Yeah. No kidding. Yeah, yeah, it was him. So he's like, <laughs> speaking with you, Indiana Jones. Yes, the Jones. That's Jar right? Jar Binks. Check it out. Is it really? Oh, okay. no, I'm okay. making it up. <laughs> Please, I wanted it to be true. <laughs> I wanted it to be true so much. Then, and ah, oh, if I could actually just make a little video and just <laughs> Jar Jar, this is like a test. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's like. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it, Young Indiana Jones was was a test for Star Wars, and um, and but how did he actually get that sh- that series on the television? Because nobody watched it, nobody remembers it, nobody cares, and yet he was able to have every episode out there and then put every single uh, episode religiously out on on video. I don't know if it's out on DVD or Blu-ray, but. Uh, yeah. I would imagine it's on DVD somewhere, but yeah, it was a big Paramount sellout for uh, you know whenever you buy a Star Trek video. I remember now. This is how I saw that episode. Uh huh. In the nineties, when I was at college, uh, they released um, the original Indiana Jones trilogy as That's a, right, on video. On video, and there was an extra video that was the young Indiana Jones, and it was one with Harrison Ford in it. They did that. Yeah. Wow. I remember that? You got a box. It didn't come in the the box set. You got it. If you bought the box set, you got it. Right. So please, some, just someone watch it. Please, just take it. You know, yeah. out of desperation, yeah. perhaps. Well, they had they had uh, videos to get rid of, I guess. And, yeah. Uh, but I would have thought they would have gotten rid of the least popular ones, and not the ones with Harrison Ford in it. But because they had to sell. Well, maybe yeah. It was, uh, you watch that, think, oh, that was pretty good. I'll go and get some yeah. more. But it I didn't. Know it was very good. Yeah. Mainly because I watched Raiders Temple. And the last few said straight through back to back. Yeah, yeah. And then because I was still hungry for more Indiana Jones, I put that on afterwards, and it was a bit of disappointment after watching the three great films. It's Raiders of the Lost Ark, it set something in motion yeah. with that character, and I'm I'm surprised though that they only did three. I'm really surprised that they didn't venture forward to do any more than that. I'm glad they, if they had it done, it would have been better to do it like in quick succession, not wait. Not wait a long time and then yeah. do one. It's a bit late when now. One's a bit old. It's a bit late now. I mean, I'm glad they didn't follow through with that. I mean, they they, they yeah. left it with uh, Last Crusade. So let's talk about Raiders. Yes, tell me, tell me what your uh, what your overall thoughts about Raiders then? It's my favourite of the three. Yeah, it is definitely. It's, it, yeah, okay, I agree. I. It's quite. I see. It's famous now because of Big Bang Theory, but it's interesting just to note that what happens in the film if in if Indiana Jones hadn't weren't in it, yeah. it would have all happened anyway. He had no control. He didn't change any anything that happened in it. It would have all happened whether he'd been there or not. What I like about Raiders, though, through the whole thing, is a you, the presence of God, the, yeah. the 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 wrath and the menace of God Ooh. overwatching the entire film, 
I feel that when I'm watching Raiders of the Lost Ark. Wow, but that's profound because there is no... I mean, Morgan Freeman doesn't appear in any of these films. It's implied throughout the film. Anytime they're talking about something biblical, a wind will blow through a wind. Yeah, a wind. A wind will blow through a wind. That's tricky. It's hard to do. (laughs) See a physicist about that. (laughs) See a doctor about (laughs) that. But yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. And then the music goes uh, evangelical and uh, Mm. thoughtful. But dark. Dark. Dark, Always yeah, dark, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's sure, trying to portray the the menace of God, yeah, the wrath of Him. But that's kind Old of like, Testament God was a bit of a dick. But give give uh, let's give George Lucas his due. Oh, um, really? Yeah, I'm sorry, but you're gonna say that one in the me. Last Crusade, um, his father was deeply religious and had him um, m- marking the Bible, and it was. He was using the Bible, of course, as a tool to look for artifacts, mm. but he he wanted Indiana Jones to know it, yeah, back to back, because he knew it would help him when he eventually becomes, you know, obviously a father wants to have his son follow in his footsteps. So yeah, I mean, he, he, the backstory of that worked really well, and the fact that that was in the third film, it mm. ties in really well with everything that Indiana Jones does in Raiders, Temple of Doom, and Last Crusade. Yeah. So there is a, a certain religious kind of overseeing body that, that that is there present throughout the whole thing. Yeah, and obviously they're going after the ark of, of the covenant. Of the covenant, yes. you know what I mean. So oh, then, yeah, it could be more on the nose really, than <laughs> than actually. Um, uh, this is biblical. Okay, um, so is the, um, the the Holy Grail and the, the, the Temple of Doom, the little potatoes, the baked potatoes. That yeah, because they, they were um, potatoes that God himself a cook okay and given to this tribe saying don't eat these potatoes <laughs> yeah. they will they will get your children back when when they're uh, yeah yeah and then they go oh which god are you yeah, like, which um, god yeah I'm yeah for him the only god and they go no that's not our god and then they have this so he just went right just leave keep it. your freaking potatoes keep your freaking potatoes we should have discussed about this before Anne, but who was originally slated to be Indiana Jones I know this one um, it seems as though they only ever tested one other person mm. um, in a long line of possible actors, Tom Selleck. Tom Selleck, who was actually at the very at, at that time, he, I don't know if he'd already done the audition or was actually being marked up to play uh, in Magnum uh, Pi. Pi, and I think that during the audition, he did say to him that you know he, you know, because they offered him the, the the role, they offered him the role on the spot. He says, "Well, I actually, I've already got a job, Magnum PI." And he says, oh, "Don't, don't let us worry about that." So they said, "Well, we'll leave it for a while." And of course, the networks were getting itchy because they said, "Well, you, you need to have locked him in by now." And unfortunately, they left it too long that they said, "No, okay." And almost as if they were afraid of, uh, of, of because he's being unreliable, they're thinking he could be difficult. So they right. just decided to go with uh, the, the next best person, who was the carpenter. Um, mm. Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. Um, he turned it down. He turned it down. Although he did have some background in carrying a heavy burden. Yeah, he did have a big carry. <laughs> he, um, huge, huge burden. burden. Wow. And uh, yeah, but he he did make a comeback in uh, in one of Mel Gibson's later films. Um, but yeah, Harrison Ford got the role. But then it was quite um, amusing because they um, the story goes that I that that. Um, you know, he was told, uh, he had, I think it was either a letter or a phone call from Steven Spielberg, you know, saying, you know, you're, you're, you're absolutely great uh, and, I, and I'm, I'm really sorry, I'm actually really sorry that we haven't gone ahead with, with you and uh, that we haven't been able to lock you in for this. And um, we very much like to, to, to do something with you again in the future. And so, of course... Steven Spielberg didn't do anything at all with, with Tom Selleck in any of his movies and he never got a call back yeah, um, you do. there's a lesson to be learned there never say no to Spielberg never say no to Spielberg and plus um, as Magnum G- uh, Magnum uh, P- is it Magnum P.I.? yeah it's G- not G.I. G- G- <laughs> Magnum G.I. Joe um, <laughs> was, uh, as it was being penned there was a writer's strike and uh, he, Tom Selleck had actually gone to Hawaii to film um, some Magnum PI episodes and, and they called it off and he basically wasn't getting paid he'd already paid for an apartment and he wasn't able to pay rent so he got a job as a carpenter um, you're kidding me um, to to cover the costs until the writer's staff came back and they were able to resume 
um, uh, recording. And just as he was actually uh, working in Hawaii as a carpenter to 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 just take to cover the costs of the the period of the writers' strike, um, everybody was there. Steven Spielberg, George Lucas, Harrison Ford were shooting scenes uh, for Ra- Ra- Raiders of the Last Ark. Lost Dark. So, in a way, Tom Selleck could have still done it and still been in P- uh, in Magnum PI for that time. That's quite amazing. Because the time that he was not doing Magnum PI, he had to get another job. That's uh, amazing. As, as a I carpenter. never knew that. That's yeah. brilliant. He um because he... obviously famously Harrison Ford was a carpenter. Exactly. Yeah. So and so was Jesus. Uh, it's, yeah. it's amazing how all these connections. That's the Holy Trinity. <laughs> That's the Holy Trinity. Jesus, Tom, Tom Selleck, Selleck, Harrison Ford. Frank, right there. Yeah. Oh my God, we're we're back. Five percent. Five percent. Right, right there. That's it. That was great. Love it. That's not. That's so not. So what's your favourite out of the three? Um, Jesus, of course. <laughs> the three Indiana Jones films. What's your favourite? Oh, the, <laughs> that appointment, the Holy Trinity. Um, uh, yeah, Raiders. I mean, I really like the Temple of Doom. Yeah. I wish that Winnie Scott and Short Short Round weren't in it. Really? Because I like Short Round. I, 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 I play the little part when they're playing card games and then both of them are cheating. There's a real cool dynamic going on there. There is, yes, that for those scenes, but then for a lot of it, they should have just backed them up a bit. Right. Yeah. Uh, for me, I think Winnie Scott got a little bit too whiny, mm. whiny. A little bit too much. She was too much for front of the screen, and I know that's because uh, Steven Spielberg wants to give her exposure, yeah, uh, because it's his wife, yeah, it, or, or wife to be, I think, at that time. I'm I think sure. when they meet her there, isn't um, that how we met her? Probably, yeah. But so that was why uh, she was very much. Uh, I, I just kind of felt as though she crowded the the screen with Indy a little well, bit too much. Yeah, I suppose because you have such a strong female character in Raiders. Yeah. To have this sort of whiny thing, it was the way to go, I guess. Yeah, I guess because it was a challenge for Indy because he's never actually had that kind of a yeah, problem yeah, yeah. in his life. And it should be said that Temple of Doom is set before Raiders of the Lost Ark. So, of course, yeah. The, the 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 whole yeah. What is it with George Lucas and not being able to do things chronologically in an order? He's just a dick, isn't he? He just doesn't. <laughs> I mean, seriously, man. Um, so that, that so Temple of Doom is actually before, but yeah, she. she you don't even have. Uh, let's just address yeah. that for a second. What is the reason to just say, "Oh well, Temple of Doom's actually set before Raiders of the Lost Ark"? Why? Why? What's the point? Uh, did he make a mistake and actually details within the film were? Uh, Unless yeah, someone picked up on some sort of detail. I, yeah, I, I, I can only. Th- it just seems such a George Lucas thing to do. Yeah, why not just do that and then make that a little bit in the future and uh, that, that's a little bit in the past. That's quite good. Uh, it's I'm, like I'm it. trying really hard to, to, to... Okay, well, Andy, this is why. Because sometimes I just don't know what I'm doing and other people around me tell me things. And I, I, I think it's a good idea and I, I run with it. Also, Temple of Doom was made um, at the same time as, as uh, well, George Lucas was going through a divorce. And I think mm. we we touched upon that when we talked about him doing Howard the Duck. Yeah. That Howard the Duck was kind of like his divorce settlement yeah. movie. Uh, this was his. Yeah. Base, yeah. Uh, Temple <clears throat> of Doom was his. Um, I'm I'm pissed off and moody, and this is how I'm going to show it, with hot potatoes and whiny women. Yeah. It is. It is a lot darker. It, it is, is a darker film, and um, yeah, th- these films run over the Christmas period, which is why they're sort of in recent memory again now and um, my daughter loved the first one she couldn't watch the second one it scared her yeah it is dark it is dark but then Empire Strikes Back Stri- Empire Strikes Back was dark so when George Lucas does make trilogies he he makes them uh, makes the second one darker it seems to be a habit yeah 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 apart from with the prequel Star Wars the second one wasn't darker than 
The third one goes dark when he kills all those the young second, Jedi. The second one is dark because that the second one is that one where he uh, his mother dies and he kills a lot of the. Oh, of course it is. Yeah, uh, I thought it was the third one. Does he, he kill? No, it's the third no, one. He th- kills. It's the third one. He kills all the children, and that's when his mom dies, isn't it? Obviously, I've been talking about retiring for several years now. I wanted to get into sort of another stage of life where I'm not in the film business anymore. Well, yeah, Temple of Doom, I think, would have been my favourite if it wasn't for the whining and uh, the crowd, uh, the, the screen crowding of... of um, right, cause I think Temple's my least favourite of the three. Yeah, I, I think I just wanted it because it was... But they did, yeah. in PG-13, was invented because of that film. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, I think another film that... Um, Spielberg had done at the time where they were getting complaints that they were pushing PG too far was it Empire of the Sun no I don't think it was Empire that wasn't that dark was it it might have been Poltergeist you know Poltergeist was 1982 right well I know they were getting they were getting a lot of criticism but it shows the power that Spielberg has he said yeah. alright well I'll just invent I'll, invent I'll just invent a, another certification yeah BBFC had to comply with their own 12 yeah that was a, the, the first 12 wasn't it well, it's PG thirteen in America. Isn't it? Yeah, but what, was was that was what was the first twelve? Ah, that's an interesting one. I'm gonna have to find out now. Uh, Tim Burton, nineteen eighty nine, Batman. That's interesting. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So there's a bit of power there. Yeah. So yeah, so but PG thirteen, of course, is the twelve that we have. Yeah, we have twelve there. PG thirteen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm so used to PG thirteen <clears> being a part of. It seems that there's so much crossover now because we always see the posters online. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now. And, uh, so yeah Temple of Doom and Short Round is he was one of those characters because of Goonies yeah. was it Goonies was Goonies, definitely yeah. before yeah um, the, it's sort of like yeah oh people love them in Goonies so let's let me put him front and centre yeah, yeah shoehorn him into this yeah and I did love the scene when he was playing cards of Indy and I, and I did appreciate that but he, also, you've got her whining all around it. Yeah. Because there's that little sort of physical comedy, isn't it, where she, she'll she go somewhere and a, a, a bat scares her. Yeah. She goes to the other part and something else scares her. Yeah. But then you got a nice little gag because the elephant won't leave her alone and keeps yeah, putting the trunk over and then it snakes so she throws she it. She throws it and she And gets... it scares Indy. Which is incredible. Which is, yeah, re- re- reversal. That's, yeah, playing, so, the, that's know, playing the game. So there, there is a lot of skill. Spielberg, that's Spielberg yeah. playing that. That's Spielberg yeah. thinking, yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying this. Yeah. So... And the third one, the third one to me just kind of it, it went through the motions. It was very, very enjoyable because I love the chemistry between um, yeah. Harrison Ford. I mean, sure. to, to say that Harrison Ford has chemistry is is sometimes a bit of a, a misnomer because he, he he he's an under he's an underplaying character all the time. He never plays anything that's too far out of 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 the realms of 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 control. But he's just got such charisma. Yeah, there is charisma. Especially in those th- first three films. Yes, yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's he, he carries, the, his charisma carries him. He doesn't really have to... That's why he got the role as Han Solo, because of his charisma and charm. And, yeah. And, and that was great. Um, and of course, he, he kind of kept it down on the, under the lid, so to speak, for mm. uh, for his Indiana Jones films. And uh, yeah, so I, I, I still like Raiders as my favourite, but... Um, but I think Raiders is definitely the best best film yeah it's got everything and it's got melting faces I love that scene yeah oh, it's brilliant absolutely brilliant yeah. I wish for anything more that, <laughs> that I love the um, the truck the van scene you know when he's trying to get the arc out of the van and all that where he goes under the yeah that's just brilliant you know because it's just it, 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 there was no CGI really you yeah, know yeah, and, it was all physical yeah yeah and the real actors doing real things and and the fight at the the airplane was also a stuntman, two stuntmen fighting, and they literally, they literally choreographed the scene with the propellers of the plane going. You at know, full speed. Um, and that is an incredible thing to yeah. do. Yeah, in filming that, the airplane actually ran over Harrison Ford's foot. Ah, yeah. So oh. he had to put it in a cast, wrap it up, and just carry on filming. He did a lot of that during the, during the film. I mean, of course... Well, he has this... Yeah, well, the yeah. famous scene where he the shoots that guy. Yeah. yeah, he had this entry, didn't he? Yeah, exactly. That's why I mentioned diarrhea at the beginning of this episode. You see, I'm, I try and tie every every loose comment... Loose comment? <laughs> I try and... Every think, loose bowel. Every lo- loose bowel comment uh, to something that is linking to, to what we're talking about. Uh, honestly, I do try. Kick. We talk about they've not been tampered with. They have slightly. 
because well, what, what, what was that? What, what? When we said they'd not been digitally tampered with really? the phone you've got. Ooh. You know when on the video version when Indy drops into the into the pit with all the snakes yes. and that cobra sort of <laughs> up like that. In the original ones, you can see the um, the window between him and the cobra. Yes, and, and there's a fog. Him. There's a fog of uh, breath from the snake or something. Or yeah, like? some venom comes out of the snake and it hits the window. Oh, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah but yeah. obviously, they did, when they re-released it on DVD, they digitally took that out. Well, that's appropriate. That yeah. is appropriate. That's that is exactly what um, retouching and enhancing is. Yeah, that not, is because if Lucas had been doing that, he'd have brought a bloody elephant down there and did you, did you get to see any of these films in the cinema last crusade i saw in the cinema i didn't see any of them yeah apart, yeah. apart from the uh fourth one. Oh my gosh oh yeah i saw that in the cinema did i yeah oh my god there was a fourth film let's not go there yet no still ground to cover what's next last crusade <laughs> <laughs> Do you know the, the Last Crusade yeah. was supposed to have the, a haunted castle in it? Yeah, and Spielberg yeah. didn't want to do it because he just done Poltergeist. Yeah, well, yeah, that makes he's, sense. All, he's all fed up with ghosts, so yeah, they got rid of that. Well, I think it's because he'd done Poltergeist because he all, had done Poltergeist. Yeah, because around that time yeah. he was venturing from one thing to another. He didn't want to repeat anything he'd yeah. already done, did yeah. he? So he's not he's not one to do sequels, no. and yet Indiana Jones was that thing that vehicle that he actually did jump on three times mm. it's quite you know I guess it's quite brave of him for someone who doesn't who said I will not make sequels E.T. will never be a sequel Jaws somebody else can screw that up I'm not even, you know but he's never you know Close Encounters could have easily have had a sequel I get yeah but it would have imagine it would have ruined it yeah. what would have, what would the sequel have been what what happened on the UFO has been taken do you think that at, at any moment um, of say the prequels of George Lucas did Steven Spielberg beforehand say you know you, you really you really shouldn't do this I, got, I can't do I can do a George Lucas I can't do a Steven Spielberg yeah. if you think about it George Lucas after How the Duck couldn't do anything else he, he just knew he, we, we all knew he was going to come back to Star Wars yeah but um, why why not why not jump on the Indiana Jones wagon straight after Last Crusade? Why did he not see because, that? Yeah, because the Last Crusade is just such it tied it it tied it all together. Yeah, it didn't there didn't need to be any more after that. Spielberg said no, that's what it was. Yeah, he did. He didn't want to. He said we're not, we're not doing it anymore, and that's why he did the Young Indiana Jones. Because I think the reason the yeah. fourth one got made, pri the only one. reason is oh. I know painful that you're actually calling it the fourth but yeah yeah, yeah. sorry why why it got made why did it get made well, I think could, everybody wanted one since the last crusade i think one of the questions people was getting asked the most is like is there any we're gonna have any more indiana jones films we want so, them so is people it wanted them. is it through pressure is it because they're sick and tired of it's like oh, okay i'll have kids if people keep on telling me when are you gonna have children okay let's have kids uh, you know yeah is so, that, right, is that, right, i don't know is that a reason to make a fourth? They, they must have had other reasons other than money. Well, Lucas wanted to do it, I think. Did Harrison Ford want to do it? Yeah, I think he did. D did he look like he wanted to do it? <laughs> no. That's a good point, yeah. I yeah, I, 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 yeah it's, it's a funny thing. Because, you know, you, you see that charisma. Is there any charisma from him in that fourth film? There's the odd little glimpse of his former self was that, at times. Was that after lunch? Was that the call after lunch? Yeah, it might have been. Yeah. After, he, yeah. He'd got up about, what, nine o'clock. Breakfast. Another <laughs> another kip. <laughs> wake up, lunch, and then he was sort of there about Back an up. hour up of good of, Ford. Of good Ford. <laughs> yeah. Part time. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said. So, yeah, Last Crusade. Um, what, what did you think of Last Crusade? I think it's really, it's really fun. Yeah. It's um, the, the dynamic between... Harrison Ford and Sean Connery is fantastic. Junior, give me your other hand. I can't hold on. I can get it. I can almost reach it, Dad. Indiana. Indiana. Let it go. Did mind Elsa as well? Was it Elsa? Elsa? Yeah, she was a really... She didn't overdo it. No, she didn't. And Yeah, it was a good little... I, did you see it coming when you watched it for the first time thinking oh she's going to be 
she's going to be a Nazi. Well, no, because the thing is, Indiana Jones is not that. With with James Bond, you expect it. Yeah. So yeah, that's why I, they're all Nazis. I thought it was really good. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, Interesting. But, uh, um, <laughs> when we watch this over Christmas, my daughter, um, she's five, and we were watching The Last Crusade, and she was really enjoying it. And just out of nowhere, she went, You know what, Dad? I really don't like Nazis. She has no idea. That's how it was just such a yeah. cute, adorable thing to say. And right as well. But it was, I think, the, the oh, whole... Sh- she mentioned there at the very thing. beginning as well, River Phoenix. Yeah. River Phoenix, yes. Which, uh, f- for some reason, makes me think that George Lucas had intended to do Young and Indiana Jones um, with River Phoenix in mind, but because he died... Well, the reason River Phoenix made it into this is because yeah. he'd just done Mosquito Coast with Harrison Ford and uh-huh. Harrison Ford recommended him so get this kid in he's really yeah. good yeah. yeah and that's a really good opener yeah it is well, with the circus train and all that that's really good and just to have and the guy who inspired him to become who he finally it came to be couldn't have been anybody else really yeah I mean, it, and that's great as well where he puts the hat on River Phoenix and, yes. he, and then when he lifts his head up it's, it's Harrison Ford yeah. on that boat and he gets that punch and he's just back into another scrape like brilliant really yeah. good and I, I think that Harrison Ford must have just seen in in River Phoenix that Indiana Jones fire yeah. that charisma and he was that I mean from 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 what you hear uh, memories of, of River Phoenix were, were that he was this this um, amazing gifted talented actor who was just cut short in his prime just like James Dean yeah. Um, but he never got to see who he could have been, and I think he was. He there, there has to be something to it that he was actually going to be penned in uh, to uh, to do Indiana Jones mm. again. You think? I think that he was supposed to be intended for the um, the, the the Chronicles, the Young Indiana Jones. But yeah. it would have been too big of a movie style thing to unless they wanted to do the movies instead of the series, yeah. and the money had to go somewhere. Yeah, they had loads of money for that uh, series. Yeah, so and it all went, it all went on special effects. It didn't go on, on storylines. <laughs> no, Temple of Doom opening was forgettable, really. Yeah, it apart was from a... the kebab stick through the, uh, the the Japanese guy's chest, and that was. Yeah, I mean, it was a singing, it was a singing dance number with yeah. uh, with Steven Spielberg's wife. She opened the film, and then we're well, usually he. He's trying, he's, yeah, he's trying to get something, and everything goes wrong for him. But this time, he's he's trying to save the village, isn't he? Essentially, yeah. Until until yeah, but the, but in that first one, in in that first scene, he's in that white suit. Yes, yeah. He's like, they poison him, don't they? Is the James Bond opening? Yeah, that's nothing to do. I mean, they had the the song number, the big Shirley Bassey number, opening it up. Yeah. Well, I mean, they must have been in direct uh, competition with one of the, the latest James Bond films that was probably coming out at the same time, and they needed to just slap them in the face with that. It felt like it was very much on the nose of a James Bond film. And the kebab skewer thing doesn't work. It's hilarious. <laughs> I know, but it just wouldn't make any sense. The, yeah. It would have meant the meat had to go through him, and then the hole sm- that's gone through him is sm- has gone smaller, so when he pulls it back through, the meat yeah. comes off. Yeah, and, and there's, there's, work. there's no way he'd sit there and go ah without actually wanting to pick something off it and have a little nibble. Come on, exactly. Tofu. <laughs> <laughs> what what was the uh, club called? Lao Shin. No, it was no, the... that was the name of the plane. Yeah, it was the Obi Wan. Was it called the Obi Wan? Yeah, it was uh, Obi Wan Lounge. Thing. Yeah, yeah, that, that's yeah. Uh, that, Lucas, after you know, putting his uh, Star Wars into everything. In the Well of yeah. Souls, in Raiders of the Lost Ark, yes. apparently in the Hieroglyphics, there's an r 2 d and a C-3PO. He does this, yeah. and uh, uh, funnily enough, let's let, let's rip on George Lucas a little bit more because the poor guy, he's used to it by now. I'm sure yeah. he's numb yeah. to all the the. the um, but this is actually quite fascinating. As a kid, he used to uh, he used to like dressing up his house as a fun house, so that all the kids can come around and, and be scared. You know, he, he charged him a fee to come in. Of course, he did to his house uh, to experience the uh, the Lucas Fun House experience. And um, allegedly, now I say allegedly the because kids walk around the house and learn about trade unions <laughs> and stuff like that. <laughs> that sounds like a parody in the making. 
Um, yeah, young, the young George Lucas film we should make. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, no, apparently every year he thought about different way, di- new and different ways to make it better, and then he'd invite the same short kids around, charge them the same amount of money, and show them uh, something that's been slightly enhanced and slightly different. That's that's very. Telling. But I, I think that that's kind of. I reckon that's been shoehorned in. Yeah. As but I reckon he uh, part of that story is true. The bit that's true is that he used to dress his house up as a, as a haunted house and, in order to scare the children. So every year now at Skywalker Ranch, yeah. they'll do like a, a Halloween theme that invites kids around, but instead of there being things, just green screens all around the house. <laughs> oh my gosh! That is hilarious, yeah, yeah. And it, it's, you, okay, you, it's, I don't, it's, it's not I scary it's, now, but whenever when, yeah. when you watch the footage afterwards, you'll be terrified. But they, they've got the kids going, and say, I, I don't understand, what is it I'm supposed to do? It's just sort of like, yeah. Just, 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 just go with it and just make it look like you're scared. Scare that, that's, yeah. that's the answer. That would be great. That is hilarious. I mean, have you seen the the making of documentary of, of of Attack of the Clones? You've got Natalie Portman standing on that conveyor belt, which is supposed to be that big factory, and she's being told you've got to go over that that blue thing there, got to go under that blue thing over there, and then go around that blue thing there. And she's she stands there and looks at him. You are kidding me. I I have no idea what I'm supposed to be doing. Are you sure? Is, is this a, she thought it was a joke. She thought that all of that blue screen stuff, when it became physical, it was just a joke. And it is. I mean, how can actors stand there and so, stare at that and go, oh, my God, there's something coming towards me and it's got teeth? It sort of takes the director out of director. Going back to Last Crusade, some classic moments in there. Yeah. And again, it, I get the feeling they think, right, I don't think I don't think people like Templars Doom as much as Raiders of Lost Ark. So you get the feeling they say, "Well, what was about Raiders that everyone loved? Let's just kind of do that." Yeah, yeah. So it was a, it maybe it was a safe, more safe movie than a more safe bet than the Temple of Doom mm. was. That is the Indiana Jones trilogy, and um, always a joy to watch. Yeah, never get old. No, no, ne- they never get old. They never get old. But what does get old? Unfortunately, happen to the human form. When um, age, when the years pop. Oh, favorite line out of Raiders of the Lost Ark. Favorite line. It just is quite apt. The it's Lost not the Ark. age, honey. It's the mileage. Ah, love that line. It's a great line. It's not. It's not that memorable because I forgot. All right. <laughs> Maybe it's just me. Yeah. No. 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 It's Any of the fourteen it's people that the... might possibly listen to this, if that line's ever stayed in you, write to us. Write to us and mother, that you can text me. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. No, Stephen, I haven't watched Raiders of the Lost Stark, but I have seen the Lake House. Your mum sounds just like George Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> All my characters are the same, <laughs> every single one. So, so okay, go on yeah. then. So that's the trilogy. After the trilogy, it was perfect as it was. It was great. Nothing could really dent. The, no. uh, the joy and love we have for that character these films until Alien Resurrection <laughs> oh sorry that's another fourth that's movie that's another fourth movie and can I just can I just jump in with a bit of a criticism here the word quadrilogy qu- I can't even say quadrilogy quadrilogy doesn't exist the word quadrilogy does not exist it does exist Die Hard quadrilogy box set the Alien Quadrilogy box set. The, this this word does not exist. It was not. It's not. It's not a word. It's a nonsensical word that they built because they wanted to have one more better than a trilogy. It's a marketing bonanza gone wild. Yeah. That's what it is. Well, it is now. I mean, it's probably in there now. I mean, there's a lot of words in the dictionary that you you'll be like, what? I mean, even Minger's in there. Is it? Yeah, I know. It's very sad. Yeah. Is um. Damn you, Webster. Is Spice World the movie in there? Um, no, but spice up your life is an expression for uh, for female arousal. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> Indiana Jones and the uh, Raiders of the Crystal Face. <laughs> now, this movie has been ripped apart by critics already. Yeah, so we don't um, need to do. What is good about it? Yeah. What is what is good? Okay. Um, I think the idea of actually getting the cast together to do a, to do a film is a, is a great idea um, no that's a lie sorry it's not a good idea um, Harrison Ford 
is always good as Indiana Jones. It was good to see him in the hat again, wasn't it? Yeah, and and the the the, the costume department did a really good, uh, a good job at, at making that hat. Yeah, and don't forget the prop masters. They made the props and the. Well, whips. apparently it was the same hat. Was it the same hat? original? Yeah, I think so. Oh, that's quite that's quite cunning because they did mess it up with the dust. So I'm, I'm surprised that they yeah. didn't actually have that in the museum. So we didn't have Nazis. No, no, let's not talk, let's not talk about the storyline right now because I'm trying know, to say that, what was good about it. There was no the, Nazis. There were not, uh, Was that a good thing? It's okay, a good thing. It's always a good thing to not have Nazis. Yeah, well, the Nazis did uh, outlive their their welcome. We instead of Nazis, we have we have the old Cold War Russians. Really? Yes, yeah, of course. Those because damn com- commies. Because they're the other pure evil that um, that we, we we had to face. Like, actually, let's talk about the actual level of. The, the actors that are in this film okay the actors don't... John Hurt John Hurt's fantastic wow amazing <laughs> <laughs> what did they do with him well uh, they, they called him Ox Oxy they named him after a pimple removal case <laughs> is that what they did um, Ray Winston Ray Winston who kept calling him Indiana Jones Jonesy Jonesy yeah because hey Jonesy was that just a, a, a character thing that they needed yeah, to have? Yeah, just an affectation. Something. Yeah, yeah. Um, they didn't need to have it. I actually think... Kate Blanchett as well. She was in okay, it. Yeah. of course she was. Yeah, she yes. was the main Russian She's psychic main Russian lady. Because that Russia was full of, of psychic females leading. So yeah, I like a, the whole bit in the warehouse. Yes, yeah, you like that? That was okay. That was done fairly well. Yeah, if if science forgets the rules of magnetism, yeah, just for a minute, um, because every, uh, well, we'll talk about alien technology, so it doesn't matter, does it? Yeah, I guess. It's oh, because there's aliens in this film. Pardon? There are aliens in this film. No, there aren't. They are. No, 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 no. Oh no, sorry, they're interdimensional beings. That's better. <laughs> As if it makes a freaking difference. It's still aliens, and yeah, um, but yeah, the, are they going the, back the, to space. I... They're going back to the space between space. We're trying to find out what we like about it. Well, oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, okay. So that's not, that's not... Oh, cool. I can't help it's it! It's difficult, isn't I it? Can't, you know, it, it's... Because I felt, I felt so disappointed, I just, I find it very hard. Okay, that's so what, it, what was that's good? it. It's, the, it's the disappointing. And it's hard that's to... That's how I felt. I remember being so excited when I knew this film yeah. was coming out. Yeah, They You were putting, like, webisodes on the Indiana Jones website. I was checking every yes. single one when they wrapped up, and they were saying, like, that's the wrap. And I was like, oh, the film's going to be edited. I was so excited. Yeah, anticipation. Yeah, I even because my mum saw me watching the Last Crusade, so I even went with my mum to watch this. Yes. And I felt I. How did she feel about it? The same, just completely. My mum does, you know, she didn't get as as affected by film as no, no, we no, do. no, because but we're, she, she yeah. come out, I come out and I was like, that's just oh, that was awful, you know. My mum was like, oh, it wasn't very good, it wasn't it? Well, you know. We were actually carry on. We need to carry on looking at the people who were in this film. I mean, Kate Blanchett, of course. Karen Allen comes back as as Marion because because that's exactly what her character would do. Um, Shia LaBeouf is in there. I don't mind Shia LaBeouf in this. He's um, okay. Yeah, he plays the James Dean type character yeah, fairly well. He does what he's told. He yeah. doesn't. Yeah, and I think he that's, did then. He did what he was told and um, do you think because Lucas is so obsessed with getting young Indiana Jones out there that his idea was to you is to again now yes. she is in this we can do more Indiana Jones but from, from Indiana Jones' mother. son and of course every time George Lucas wants to do this uh, somebody puts a bag over their head or, or dies yeah you know it's it's, 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 it's it's either one or the other it's like either they die too young or they're sticking paper paper he- hats on their heads I'm going to put a conspiracy theory out there okay there's a conspiracy theory Sheila LaBeouf okay is. purposely went off the rails to get George Lucas off his back okay I'm going I'm putting that Ooh, out there Oh, interesting interesting this is the was, only way I can get, get rid of him get rid of him and get him to stop is me to, is to make him unlikable make him a uh, box office uh, venom yeah uh, yes. poison yeah yes okay that's that's interesting that's an interesting little theory there let's go with that okay so so Shire are, are you, are you going to call me back like Shire, Shire, Shire 
Oh, oh, hang on. I've just got a video just come through and you're... you're do okay. The shy would be like on the phone to Lars von Trier. Lars, man. What am I gonna how do? am I going to get Lucas off my back? He goes, put a bag over your head and say you're not famous. Yeah. <laughs> they probably told him to do that <laughs> yeah. figuratively. And Lars von Trier. Oh my God, there is. Yeah. This is and then I'll tell you what, conspiracy. my next film, Nymphomaniac, you can be in it. You can be in it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that will help. <laughs> and there you go. And then Luke's is like, I can't have him, though. Okay, so let's just scrap that idea. Shia LaBeouf was the last straw. Shia LaBeouf was the straw that broke George Lucas's back. Yeah. And we just don't know it. We just had no idea. Come um, on, 14 people who listen to this. Get come that, on. Get that out there. Get that out there. So yeah, um, so Shia LaBeouf was in there and he was likeable in this. Ray Winston was, yeah. He was Ray Winston. He it? was Ray Winston. John Hurt played a... Unrecognisable. <laughs> Yeah, but unrecognisable for no point. They could have just had anybody in the role and it wouldn't mm. have mattered because we didn't really care. Uh, Jim Broadbent was in there. Oh, yeah, of course he was. And I don't understand why. Um, because he, he had a crappy bow tie on. They didn't need to have another character. They didn't need to have these this, this many characters. They need to just calm down. A bit. I think that shows the love and affection people have for Indiana Jones as those three films, that all them wanted to be in it. Okay. That's what it says to me. And the end product completely ruined and okay so that that okay so we're going with the notion that this was actually going to be an amazing experience for everybody yeah everyone wanted to be in Indiana Jones film it was like the reason Samuel Jackson was in Star Wars because he just wanted to be in a Star Wars film true why was Karen Allen in there for the same reason why did she come back to do Marion that just seems like a, such a George Lucas thing Oh, we've got to have which is the, which is the the the, la the lady we talk about most out of the, yeah, who, the radio, you know, the yeah. Indiana Jones franchise. It'll be her. Yeah, Karen Allen's the one that gets spoken about the most. So we'll bring her back because we want Indy to have a son. So that'll be his son that he doesn't know about that she had. And it has to be from her because we want that character to have that kind of personality. Yeah, but in a way, I kind of wish that the that the script had been given to somebody who had common sense this to is another get thing. rid of the alien part. There was a script floating around Indiana Jones and the quest for um, Atlantis. Yes. That sounds infinitely so more interesting. So much more exciting, yeah. yeah. And it's, re it, it's something that's recognisable. I mean, the Ark of the Covenant, instantly recognisable as, as something that is as a sought-after yeah. uh, artefact. Yeah, the, the hot potatoes as a MacGuffin mm. for something else for getting the everybody wants to get the it was about rescuing the children it was for that yeah. one so that was personal yeah. you know everybody wants to make sure the children are safe right. the Holy the, Grail the Holy Grail everybody knows what the Holy Grail is yeah but this convoluted um, uh, this convoluted what do you call it is it like um, what? Where, where do they go at the end is it like this, a, this, they get into that chamber don't it's they it's a chamber and there's Sand, loads of aliens all the way around and one with no head on when they stick the head on it they all turn they all turn and it's kind of like the key that yeah. goes in the lock but the, obviously that this this big monument was just built like like the maze in, in Maze Runner uh, it's such an elaborate thing oh no look it turns out to be a UFO a spaceship yeah it's a spaceship oh but, no it's interdimensional yeah but what, if it was just underground why why couldn't it just take off it needed it was missing it one need, of its heads it needed to have its head put in there so that it could take off yeah yeah bit thin isn't it it's so this it, is how it should have gone right okay Indiana Jones finds Atlantis yes some other nasty people are trying to find it or the something Russians, like the that the Russians will be fine yeah I don't know but not not psychics not not psychic Russians just, just typical brutish Russians who just want to kill and at the end who want power and at the end, Indy should have died. In a gulag, mm. after being Sometimes uh, they waterboarded. Find... Yeah. <laughs> in, in a gulag in Siberia. <laughs> he freezes to death. Yeah. And then and then they pull his body out. and it, No, it's too much like Han Solo in Carbonate. Yeah. Um, but not what, I mean, seriously. I yeah, think it, they should have killed him off. He, yeah. That would have been the perfect way to end it, is in... He, they find Atlantis, something magical happens, would be amazing, he dies saving everybody. Yeah. That yeah. would have been perfect. Still to this day, people are begging for one more Indiana Jones film. Still? Yeah. But people people need to stop begging and actually 
do That's something. I think Harrison Ford wants to do it. I think he wants to yeah, do it. Yeah, they, they, they have been rumours, and it has been said that uh, India, uh, that IMDb does have a page for Indiana Jones 5. And it goes something like this. According to Variety and article pen, Peter Karanikas, <laughs> deputy editor to the Hollywood Trade Magazine, so misinformation is not something to be expected within this article's content, of, of course. Um, about midway through the article, Karanikas recaps some of the projects that uh, Januszu Kiminski, oh my god, why do they have to have such complicated names, worked on as a, cinema, as a cinematographer. And then he caps a paragraph with the following line. His next project is the upcoming fifth Indiana Jones movie. And Kaminsky is a long-time collaborator for Steven Spielberg as a cinematographer. cinematographer. And if he has already got planning in the works for serving as a cinematographer for Indiana Jones 5, then work on the film must be further along than any of us realise. Indiana Jones 5 rumours have been swirling around for several years, of course, but this is this is the first mention about a project's possible future. Wow. Well, Harrison Ford wants to do it. He'd do it. He said he'd do it in a New York minute. Well, um, how long is that? Apparently not so long, according to the Olsen twins. Yeah, I, I don't care if they make another one. I have no control over whether they do or not. <laughs> okay, they've made it. It's, it's coming out of the cinema tomorrow. Okay. Are you going to go and watch it? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Why? <laughs> Why does it happen? Why? Because it's Indiana Jones. Why? I know, but we don't... We we, we, we don't need it. No. We don't want it. But, but if they did it, yeah, we'd be, we'd there. be there in our millions watching yeah. it. Oh, oh, man. It's, it's like Doritos. It's like bloody Pringles. Why don't you stop? popping you just can't stop popping it's exactly like that yeah i don't understand i don't understand why we're so controlled by by hollywood but we are we will go and watch it we will we will oh man but just because loads of people go to see a film yeah doesn't mean it's any good doesn't mean it's any good exactly and that's that's transformers in a nutshell yeah or, in a, or teenage mutant ninja turtles in a half shell very good hey Yes. Well, so there we go. Indiana Jones. First three films yeah. are fantastic, great fun. Fourth one, not so much. We know it's been ripped to shreds already, and uh, there's there's nothing more we can really add uh, other than just it was disappointing. Yeah. Let's let's uh, hold out for that fifth one, really. Indiana Jones and the Temple of Nightfall. <laughs> Indiana Jones and the Stick of Wood. Indiana Jones and the Zimmer Frame of of the exuberating depth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Indiana Jones and the Ball of Wool. Uh, Tom Selleck, Harrison Ford, and the Trinity, Holy Trinity of Jesus Christ, yep. exists. Um, River Phoenix could have been Indiana Jones. Shia LaBeouf could have been Indiana Jones. Karen Allen should have just kept stayed in doing making Hallmark movies. Yeah. Um, and Harrison Ford, he's done. You think? He's done. George yeah. Locust is done. At least we know we George, know he's done. George now. Locust. We know, <laughs> but at least we know now that George Lucas is retired. Yeah, thank God. Here at Cinedine, we understand that there is a time and a place for watching blockbuster movies, and there is also a time and a place for enjoying quick and easy food. That time is Cinedine. We've combined the state-of-the-art movie ritual within our fast-growing change of multiplex cinemas with the must-have dining experience. Your attention and enjoyment of popcorn movies is enhanced by 3,000% thanks to our fully disclosed secret ingredient which you can enjoy within all of your favorite food items. Popcorn, hot dogs, nachos with Ed's special liquid cheese, and not to mention our City Dine menu with food suitable for all ages, religions, and counterculture professionals. At City Dine, we are proud to use British meat, which is also suitable for all vegetarians, vegans, and diabetics. And for those fussy little children who are ready to sit down and glance occasionally at the screen, every food item contains sherbet of some description. Even our economically sized popcorn boxes are edible. That's right! You can even eat the plates, Dad! That's right, little one. 
Cinedyne has listened, and we know what makes your next movie experience the best one you've ever had. Until next time, that is. <laughs> Cinedyne. Fanatical about food. You know, I, I want to take this opportunity to, to let the people know how they can contact our friends of Frame by Frame. They do that podcast You thing. know, two guys, yeah, they do the podcast, okay? So they're, how... They're, they're nice, they're, they're like a forest, which is a beautiful thing. Exactly. And so if you want to, to, to do the communicating thing, you know, the social networking uh, thing... Yeah, you can yeah. Uh, you can tweet those guys tweet? at Frame by Frame 78. If you'd like to go to the website, that will be www.roastedportions.com. You don't need to do the www. It's implied that it's going to be the World Wide Web. The people need to know that. Okay, just go to roastedportions.com, okay? You go down on the right-hand side, you've got the social connections. You can you can talk to the people who do the show. You can even talk to uh, uh, the people who made that movie, you know, CACO3. Who'd want to talk to those mooks? I don't know, they made a pretty interesting movie, right? Yeah. It was in black and white. Yeah, black and white. I yeah, like you know, that. We like black and white because and there was also some trees in that movie too. Oh trees, it's like like being in a forest which is a beautiful thing. Other connections, you can really get to know these people on YouTube as well, and if you wanna comment on their on their podcast, I urge you to do that. Okay? Yeah, I think it is a, a proper, really nice thing if people want to start contacting these Subscribe guys. Subscribe to them and then and, and com comment. I mean, it's just just polite, you know. Also, you can email them at framebyframe78 at gmail.com. That's it. I think that's everything wrapped up, so. Hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go and plant a tree somewhere. Okay, you go plant some trees. I'm, I'm going to go, go and plant a tree. I'm going to go tweet. You tweet, I'll plant a tree. It's us, we're out of here.